Hello and welcome to this week's show. Uh, thank you for joining me. Hopefully you can see me okay and hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, if you can, that's brilliant. And we're on a... We're back to normal. Uh, so, yeah. No, um, right, we were behind with the shows. We've had to jumble them up in the past. Um, like a couple of weeks ago, we had two guests on one show. And... So we had to mix them around and we missed our history topic because of that. But we're going to be looking at a history topic, which was voted by you um, on the Cambridge Story and Facebook page. We're going to be looking at that very shortly. So we have got that. Finally, finally got there. But first of all, I'd like to welcome you all to the show. Thank you for joining me today and being a, being a part of the program. And like I said, if you want to get involved with like topics that we discuss, you can by going to the Cambridge Historian Facebook page, and you can do that at facebook.com forward slash the Cambridge Historian. That's facebook.com forward slash the Cambridge Historian. You also, if you'd like to be involved with the show while it's broadcasting live, if you're not watching it, Sunday, uh, just gone, well, three minutes past six, on the Cambridge Historian Facebook page or any of the other pages it's going out in, then you're going to be able to comment during the live show. But if you'd like to, you need to go to facebook.com forward slash the Cambridge Historian to comment and be a part of the show and get involved with what, what we're talking about uh, this week on the show. And you can check out the website at cambridgehistorian.co.uk. There's loads on there, loads of bits and bobs. I don't want to go into too much detail. And, of course, the theme music you had at the beginning, if you'd like to buy your copy, only 99p, you need to go to jasonbruce.com and look in uh, the store there that he's got and look for Cambridge Story in Life. And you can own your very own copy of the song and you can go around whistling Cambridge Story in Life. <laughs> okay, believe that. we'll leave that there for now. Uh, but let's get on with the show. And this week... To start us off, we're going to be looking at celebrities connected to Cambridge. And of course, this was something suggested by you. I gave you a choice a few, well, a few weeks now back on the Cambridge Historian Facebook page to either pick Cambridge facts or Cambridge celebrities. So well-known people in the public eye connected with Cambridge. And of course, you've not only been saying you would like to hear about celebrities sorry i've just dropped, dropped my book and tell this is live you've not only been talking about celebrities you've actually been sharing your memories of celebrities that you've met in cambridge so we're going to hear some of them if you're watching the show and you're watching us live and you saw a celebrity in cambridge please let us know who it was in the comments and we, we, we can share them 
share with you on the program. Love to hear who, who you've seen um, in and around Cambridge. Okay, well, let's let's get on with some of the celebrity names connected to Cambridge. Now, let's see how many people you know. So maybe suggest a few people. I'm, there is quite a few. So I'm just going to go through some names that have connections with Cambridge. And I'm going to bring bring one up. I'm going to start with this person. And of course, this one should be should be quite quite well known to people in Cambridge. In our case, here we go. And it's of course Stephen Hawkins. Uh, I, I don't know if any of you watching have seen Stephen Hawkins. Uh, I've seen him a few times around Cambridge, and the last time that I actually saw him. Uh, before he passed away, was at the Mill Road Winter Fair um, in 2017. Yeah, in 2017, I saw him at the Mill Road Winter Fair. So I've often, often gotten to see him about around the city centre. Let's move on to the next one. Now, this guy, this guy who Laurel, Laurie, now he was involved with a lot of comedy programmes in the UK throughout the 80s nice teaming up with Stephen Fry we might hear about him a bit later on and we I mean he was involved with Blackhead of course with Rowan Atkins and lots of other things and of course he came on to, into America came and hit in America with the um, sitcom I think it's a sitcom drama sort of thing called House where he's a doctor and not many people know actually that if you check out, I don't know if you can remember this advert from from the 1980s, Kellogg's Crunchy Nut advert, uh, Crunchy Nut Corn Flakes. And it's the one where the man is late in the bed and breakfast getting his, his corn flakes. And he sits down, eats some wide landlady's coming through. And of course, the tox clicking by and she's getting closer and closer. And he's eating fast. And she comes in and he's gone. And he's actually hiding under the table. And the table moves around at the end. It's actually Laura who is in that. So he was actually connected to the advert. It's a little interesting fact. But it's one one I remember from my childhood. Um, of course, I think I'm in the I'm in the way of this picture. Let me let me take myself off for a sec. Of course, Emma Thompson. Uh, she studied at Newman College, and and to do with to do with drama and acting uh, let's move on i don't know if you've met any of these and of course we said about who laurie and this is stephen fry and he's, all, he's also connected and he studied at queen's college in cambridge and he was involved in lots of programs like blackadder etc like who laurie and of course he went on to present a quiz show qi um, in recent years and actually, he was involved with commercials in the 1980s as well. Um, I don't know if you remember the extra strong mint when there's two people in a hot air balloon and they're getting lower and lower and lower to the ground and they need to chuck in stuff off. Um, the guy with the big moustache, which is Stephen Fry, reaches for the extra strong mints and blows it up. Um, and they managed not to hit a mountain. So there you go. These these things that we don't we just like we forget about and move move on from Richard Amber, of course. He was actually born in Cambridge in nineteen twenty-three. And of course he died in 2014, 2014 um, aged ninety. And of course he's connected with lots, lots of films. And recently I think it's um the Jurassic Park series. Jurassic World, I think, and he's been he's been involved with that. Let's move on. And this is, of course, Ian McKellar. He has kept connections within Cambridge, and this lady here, she grew up uh, as a child um, in Cambridge. It's Olivia Newton John. Of course, she's famous for mostly well, mostly remembered for um, yeah, Greece. I was trying to think of the, the <laughs> trying to figure the film then uh yeah grace uh with john travolta and she of course later emigrated 
development as a child to Australia. And not many people realise that actually, as a young child, she was from Cambridge. Who's next? Warwick Davis. Of course, he's famous for Star Wars films and recently in lots of quiz shows on TV. And he didn't live in the Cambridge City Centre. He lived in part of Cambridgeshire. He lived in Peterborough. And so he lived, he lived close to, to this area. And who else we got? Guy Pearce. Now, Guy Pearce, yeah, he, he, he was born in Ely, actually, in 1967. So, like Olivia Newton-John, he emigrated to Australia. So, he was born in Ely, 1967. And he, of course, hit fame with being in Neighbours. Uh, I can't remember who he played. If you know who, who he played in Neighbours, let me know. Drop us a message in the comments section. And we we can we can bring bring that up. And he's been in other films. Uh, I'm trying to think what films he's been in. Um, he was in the remake, of The Time Machine, of course, the H.G. Wells book. Uh, the original film came out in the sixties, and he was involved with the remake in recent years. And he's also been in Iron Man Three, I believe. Okay, now this is a person everybody should know the connection to Cambridge with him and that's called Sid Sid Barron of course he was the founder of Pink Floyd uh, he started he grew up his family had connections in Cambridge and he in his early days he played in bands such as Jeff Martin the Myers and he he played really small gigs um, mainly a cover covers of like people like Eddie Cochran and songs like that and he played small gigs including school halls back in them days and of course he progressed and founded Pink Floyd and of course due to issues within his life he left Pink Floyd and came back to live in Cambridge where he wanted to live a quiet life and out of at the public eye really and he would often be seen riding around on his bike uh i think on a few occasions more than once I see him around cambridge the sort of thing that you he wanted to be left alone basically and sadly there is a lot of videos and stuff on the internet where people follow him around there's one terrible one on youtube where he's coming out of a shop and it's all in slow motion and then walking it's terrible and where I, when I saw him, I just let him let him get on and do his thing because that's what he wanted to do. But yeah, he has connections within Cambridge. And moving on to the next one, Douglas Adams. Of course, he was a writer of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy trilogy of five books. I think it's five books. And he you well, he was studied in Cambridge and he actually in his books, used the connection of Cambridge in his books. He also was a script editor of uh, the TV series Doctor Who. And a script that he wrote for Doctor Who was meant to end the 1979 series um, after this um, round it off. And it would have been the last one, actually, that would see the original Tom Baker before the whole new complete change into 1980s happened but due to strikes only the location filming was done in cambridge and some of the studios and over the years there's been releases where it's been re reconstructed and re-edited and all kinds of things and in recent years it's been um the final scenes to make one story it's been animated and now available in full, I suppose, due, um, thanks to the animation, of course. And so was filmed around Cambridge in the 1970s. And of course, that's his connection as well. And he uses a lot of locations. Uh, and he creates the fictional uh, college, St. Ked's College, which Emmanuel College is used for that. So if you're ever down St. Andrew Street, uh, near Manuel College, that's the college it was made, um, that was a college that was used 
and studying at St. Ked's College. Uh, there is no St. Ked's College in Cambridge. It's just a fictional one by Douglas Adams. Okay, moving on. Uh, this guy also connected to Pink Floyd, like Sid Barrett, of course, grew up in, in Cambridgeshire himself. He took Sid Barrett's place in the band Pink Floyd um, as the singer when Sid came away from the band. And he, of course, started off small time bands in Cambridge. A uh, noted one uh, was Joker's Wild, and they played places like the Victoria and the Dorothy Ballroom and places like that in these early days. And they, a lot of their stuff was cover stuff. Um, I know that they did cut a record with limited print uh, with covers a lot of Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons stuff. But there you go. Let's bring me back up. So there's some famous names connected to Cambridge. Um, I don't know how many you know. Maybe, maybe you, maybe you've seen some. Um, but do if you have seen a celebrity in Cambridge and you want to mention it, please do. You need to go to the Cambridge Historian Facebook page if you're watching live, and go to facebook.com forward slash the Cambridge Historian. And the, oh, I'll put it back up. It disappeared really quick there. Facebook.com forward slash the Cambridge Historian and leave your leave your story in the comments section there we go okay well well you've also like i said you've also for those over the weeks leading up to this of course we're a little bit behind with bringing bringing all this up and a lot of you have been mentioning celebrities and well-known people that you've seen in and around cambridge and let me know and I want to want to share. So I've got these. I've written all these down in my little kind of glittery notebook. It's yeah. It's the only notebook I could get hold of to make notes uh, at the time. Uh, there you go. But there you go. It does. It does the job. It does the job that I wanted to do to write down notes. And it's got my notes for this show in it. And some of the celebrities that you've been talking about that you've seen in Cambridge. Okay, well, the first one is from Joan Saint. I've got, oh, let me just say before I do that, there was over 94 people who sent me their uh, bumping into celebrities, meeting them, knowing them, chatting to them, working with them. And of course, I can't fit them all in this show, but here is. A handful I've picked out a random. So thank you for everybody who got in contact and sent me your stories. But let's start off with Joan Saint. And she said that she met Sheila Hancock and John Four in Cambridge. Of course, he's more well known with more um, Inspector Morse. Um used to do with Oxford. So hey, John Four in Cambridge. I uh, got another one here by Diana Kempt. Uh, I met a famous actress she won't name but it's an interesting story this because she was caught in a store that diana worked at shoplifting Ooh. <laughs> she was staying at the art fair oh no she was sorry not staying she was probably staying in the police cell that night but she was she was starring at the art sphere at the time hopefully she got to a performance still so wow celebrity in cambridge stealing a shop okay felicity collins says prince charles prince edward and prella i don't know the speak probably in it prella scales i do apologize i bumped into charles in market street both with umbrellas up so it must have been a rainy day when she bumped into him prella scales i bumped into literally um as she walked walked away from the sausage man van signal like this I think she means those people to give you hot dog sausages around around town and was with a, having a lunch and of course prince edward cycled past me in jesus lane thank you for that um alistair, alistair birch he also saw prince edward but a little bit different circumstances because 
he rode his bike into him once. Um, that's Prince Edward rode his bike into Alistair, Alistair Birch and asked, does that mean a celebrity in Cambridge count? Um, I think, I think so. <laughs> he, he threw himself upon you, well, threw himself off his bike upon two upon you. Uh, dear. John Tompkins uh, said, I used to do work for Clive James. Uh, dated Rod Stewart's niece. Hey. And he said he's got a picture of him and Rod Stewart somewhere. I'd love to see that. So he, so he dated Rod Stewart's niece. Um, Lloyd Mann said um, he met Robson Green, of course, probably filming uh, Grandchester. Um, Valerie Keaton Zink uh, met a lot of singing artists, including Adam Faith in Cambridge. Of course, a lot of music artists of the 60s uh, and 70s did perform in Cambridge. Just to name a few, oh, let's think, the Beatles, uh, they did the Regal twice in 63, 19th of March and 26th of November. Uh, you had the Who, the Rolling Stones, loads of people. Hendrix did Dorothy Ballroom in 67, in February 67. So you, you could go on, you could go on what it is. So she, she got to meet lots of different bands. Uh, I think that's Don... Dawn Pazlonen, I think. I do apologise if I said your name. It's why I've written it down in my notebook. I do apologise if I've said it wrong. I said she met Timmy Mallet in Cambridge. You know, Timmy Mallet of Mallet's Mallet. And you remember that as a kid, like whack a day and all that. And this big, big massive, I don't know what it was made out of, this big massive mallet thing and smack kids around the head with it. Um, if they got a question wrong, uh, you, you couldn't do that now. And Matthew John Hedges said he met Bill Waddy. Uh, John Madden Gold uh, nearly, ah, where? Prince Edward nearly run over. And let's see what name was it. Uh, near, where Prince Edward fell off, uh, came off his bike and hit Alistair Birch. John Mangold nearly run over Prince Charles when he was studying in Cambridge. God, just imagine. He could have been a. <laughs> I wonder how, how, how that would have been took if Prince Charles did. Yeah, that's shocking. I'm so pleased he didn't, really. I can imagine he is as well. Uh, Nick Richardson met Oliver Reed whilst he was making a movie in Cambridge. Uh, Karen Webb met David Jason at the Nat West Bank. Ah, I've met, I remember chatting to... Um, Oh, I'm trying to think of it. Oh, what's his name? Oh, you know your mind goes blank when you put on the spot. Uh, oh, this is really bad. I'll, let's just say I met a celebrity in a bank in Cambridge. Um, also uh, met, you know, the TV show, Pointless. Uh, met um, Richard from that, another guy with the glasses, tall guy. And chatted to him on a on a train once, and of course, uh, when when drinking with somebody from EastEnders, so in a pub with a, um, a few years back, went drinking, nice drinking in a pub with a character from EastEnders. I wonder if you can guess which character it is. If you get it right, I tell you, you got it right, and. I'll save the best to last because this story is brilliant. It's an excellent story. It's from Graham Smith. He said he met Buzz, Buzz Aldred at Park Street Car Park some time ago. He asked Graham for directions to Bedford. And it's got here. I thought, that's good. You can't find your way... Well, Sorry, I've got to read this. Um, just reading it. Right, let's start again. Right. Buzz Aldred at Park Street Car Park some time ago. He asked Graham for directions to Bedford. But Graham thought, that's good. You can find your way to the moon, but you can't find your way to Bedford. There you go. <laughs> that's the story. I was trying, I was reading one line ahead and completely messed myself up. 
um, hopefully it's still a good story so yeah there's some of the stories so thank you for getting in contact and sharing your celebrity stories and of course there's some names there there's many more if i've missed any just get in touch let me know who i've missed and we'll, we'll, we'll put them on we'll put them on the list but you asked for me to chat about celebrities in Cambridge and finally finally got through to it on this show okay fingers crossed hopefully if technology works and goes the right way i've got a guest coming up shortly but before that let's run through a few things once again um of course if you want to comment um talk about celebrities chat to my guest uh when they come up you can by going to facebook.com forward slash the cambridge historian um of course you can also go to the website there's loads of things going on in the website there's articles videos audio uh so much and of course mill road tv is coming up on there very soon to level its own page where you can watch all the latest mill road tv videos and you've got a radio where you can while you're browsing through the through the back pages of the website you can while you're browsing, you can listen to the music the radio station in the background with great songs from the 50s right through to the 90s so it's there for you and of course if you want to get in contact with me drop me a message maybe appear on the show maybe you want to share something you can at info at cambridgehistorian.com Brilliant. Okay, well, well, I don't, I don't know where where the time's gone. We're halfway through the third series. Of course, this show has surprised me with the amount of interest it's got, not just locally about Cambridge, but worldwide. I'm getting messages from people all over the world, and it's great to hear from them. Of course, you're also tuning in and saying that you enjoy the show. So I do do thank you for that. And from the very first show, I had no idea what I was doing uh, with this. And I didn't think it would last past the first series. I thought I'd do a few shows, see how it goes. It soon made a second. And within this third series, it's grown even bigger. And that I've got to thank all you, the viewers, for. So there's still lots more to come. And, of course, I will also give you the viewers an option and a chance to vote during this series on the Cambridge Historian Facebook page about what you would like to see and me to discuss um, on the show in the remaining episodes. Of course, hope fingers crossed within the, if we're in the full series when it comes along, we're gonna have a complete new look and really, really, really push the show. Uh, that little bit further in the full series but it's been brilliant and hopefully very soon my guest is gonna pop up and be chatting to us and talking about their memories and probably hopefully memories connected to Cambridge as well I don't know if you've noticed I've I've had a bit of a spring clean with my oh sorry about that I hit my microphone uh, with my top hat I'll give it a bit of a clear out and put some new bits and bobs in it uh, i've got a ticket here for the oh, everything's back to front of me so sorry if i'm going to wait for a, a duxford museum and heather's book book oh Maybe i've got some more here which i want to bookmark which i'm going to probably have in so look at that there's this one from petty curie days early bookmarkers so I'm stick them in at some point I think as well also <coughs> Heather's is a well-known book shop connected to Cambridge so I thought it had to go in it had to be a part part of it right. give my my hat a bit of a tidy up okay well hopefully my guests will be here very shortly uh, otherwise, I'm going to run out of things to say. Please do comment. Please do get involved. Usually, you're chatting so much, um, getting involved with it. Uh, maybe, maybe because of the holidays are coming up now, you've probably gone to a lot of you do the chats who get involved have gone on. Uh, but it's always great 
hearing from you and you getting your comments involved with the show. Um, yeah, really good, good stuff. Okay, well, hopefully my guests will be here very shortly. And of course, we will be looking at memories, not just to do with Cambridge, but memories in general, because that is something that we've covered in the past on the show. And with that, are people's personal memories of life and how how things have changed really over over the years. And of course, it's, if it's not necessarily about Cambridge, things around Cambridge change um, change too. So that would affect Cambridge. It's like one good example is places like Walworths. Now Walworths. Um, people talk about Woolworths in Cambridge. Now, Woolworths is a, was a, a national store all over the UK. and But it was seen as part of Cambridge. And of course, when Woolworths went, it was like a part of Cambridge was lost as well because it's such a big store. Of course, been in Cambridge from the 1930s, of course, down, down Sydney Street. So sometimes bigger things do affect Cambridge as well, and it's the world are changing around it. And it's good, good to hear those memories too from people and them sharing, sharing them with us. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think about places that have changed in Cambridge for me. Uh, one of the one big change for me was Bradwell's Court. Now, I don't know how many of you watching can remember Bradwell's Court, but back in the day, it was like next to Drummer Street bus station, and it was back when, when I was a kid, a meeting place. For young people yeah okay it was run down it was the first shopping arcade in cambridge it was run down it didn't look great um probably smelled um a bit risque um and but to me it was always an important part of my childhood because it was a meeting place and you could have placed, I remember the little shop on the corner, there was a pet shop in there at one point. Argos was there, you had Laser Quest there, and Bookshop there. I used to love, when I was at college, I used to love in my lunch breaks or whenever, going down to the bookshop, looking for the books, and some brilliant books in there. In my mind's eye now, I can still remember the layout of was cool and how it looked and of course how it smelled and some interesting stories with my memories of Bradwell's cool is one of them being that when I was when I was a kid back back in the day uh, we went into Argos me and a friend and he got one of these new cool watches back back then uh, where you could use it as a remote control for your TV and he programmed it to work TVs in Argos and kept turning one of them up and down and up and down on the volume and like somebody come out turn the volume back down to, to turn it back up or kept flicking through the channels and in the end I don't know if it's a manager supervisor or whoever came out from the back and he literally said i have us doing this stop and on saying that flipped the tv off switched it completely off at the front and so that's that's a memory that i've got from from brad from bradwell school and got a comment from bruce bruce has put a comment mark who used to work in jay's records became the bookshop manager when jay shut down ah so when, of course, Jay's record, which was down originally down Fitzroy Street, and then moved to Bradwell's, uh, no, well, Fitzroy Street, moved to Burley Street, was 
Ah, I probably, I probably didn't even realise it was him back in the day. I was, but the that bookshop was, was a brilliant bookshop, and of course at the other end you had a cafe, how I remember it, a caf, and I remember sitting sitting in that cafe. I think it was a key cutters, a sports shop, and down the far end was a shoe shop. And around the corner was Nationwide Building Society, I think, if I remember right. And a bit further up was Moonpiece. Uh, that's that's all a long time ago. And it's actually, it's thanks to Bradwell's call that made me realise that history isn't just the past. It's about the present too. So... When you're looking at history, a lot of people think, oh, it's just old photos and you're talking about the past and things that happen. But then you've got to remember, how did those photos from the past get there? How did they come, come apart, a part of it all? Well, it's somebody who went out back way back when and took these photos when it was the present day. And walking through Bradwell's Corp, well, wow, that actually that boarded it all up, and you had a little gangway down the side, like all blocked in by white walls and all that. And I was walking through, and it was a wet day. I remember it being a wet day. I'm walking through it, thinking that's Bradwell's call gone. I think a lot of people are going to be happy, but it's part of my my childhood gone. Part of my childhood been taken away there, and I then realised at that point that I hadn't took any photos of Bradwell's Court myself, not one, not one photo, and I wish I had. And that sort of made me realise, wait, this whole history thing, history is the past, but it's also about today. We need to record today as well. So over the years, I got involved with a few projects. Uh, I actually created a few projects uh, about recording present day. I did one in 2009 and 2015, talking about, about recording present day history. But I see my guest, my guest's popped up. I'm gonna bring him up and we're gonna chat a little bit about history. Um, it should be up on the screen very soon. Hello, Paul. Hi, Fonz, you alright? Yeah, yeah, how, how are you doing? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Look, enjoying the picture of Fonzie behind you. I can't, can I get you to log out and log back in because I can't quite hear you? You keep okay. breaking up. If you log back out, log back in and then we'll go from there. Should be alright then. Brilliant stuff. Um, yeah, that's how that's our guest, uh, Paul Paul Hindersby. Of course, I know him. I worked with him many years on and off in radio. So we've worked we've worked on a few radio stations together, and we haven't chatted just recently. So it'd be good to hear his memories of Cambridge and memories in general. As well, so he'd be back up in a moment. Yeah, but as I was saying about. Right, that's cool. I've realised that actually it's not just about the past, it's about the present day as well. And from now on, every time I go out and about around Cambridge, I take my camera with me and I take a photo of nearly everything. Um, I must have a massive collection of present day, present day Cambridge from about mid 2000s uh, right up to today um there's so many photos i don't know what i'm going to do with them but maybe in the future you'll all you'll all get to see them um let that's a way to way to share there's a way to share but to, photography is so easy these days you can you can take photos on your phone you can you, know, you don't need film you're not going down to the shop uh, so I'm sending it away through the post. Do you remember that? Sending sending it away through the post and sending your photos away in a little little envelope 
the little rolls of film, posting them off, and then they would come back to you. And you'd have to wait, and you wouldn't know what you've took a photo of. Uh, well, you, you off, obviously you'd like you took a photo, but you wouldn't know how it looked. Like nowadays, you can look at it instantly, and you can ditch it, bin it, or whatever. And you were so careful with what you took because film was so expensive. So there's probably a lot of things you probably didn't take a photo of because how costs involved with buying it and then getting it printed. And Bruce is saying, uh, pont the print. Yeah, I think I think that's it. It's little. I've I've still got some somewhere. I've still got some of these little envelopes, and you stick your film in and you put them through the post just think though how terrible you know what i mean looking at it now it's a bit risky if that got lost you'd never see your photos again it's just just crazy just crazy but that's that's the part part of the 80s and how how things have changed so there's no excuse these days to not take a picture because near enough every person has got a mobile phone on them so it's it's not just cambridge i'm talking about it's you could take a picture of day of your life how like how cool is that like every day of your life and log it on set a blog up or put it on your facebook page uh, it's you could create a brilliant record nowadays using for graphic technology and it's just amazing it's just amazing and ah i've got we've got paul back up here we go we're going to bring, bring him back up now hello paul hello is it better yeah i can hear you better now cool awesome okay yeah well you you, you know the format of the show is about we talk about Cambridge and history and stuff. Looking at Cambridge, is there any place that's no longer in Cambridge or changed that you can remember? To be honest, as a kid, I didn't really go to Cambridge that much. I've sort of really sort of gone to it as an adult a bit more. So I don't really remember how it looked as a kid. Yeah. Any, like... Any any place any places that because it's changed over so much. Um, any changes that you've noticed? Because you've done a lot of radio along with me in Cambridge. Now radio's changed a lot. But, but radio is one of those industries that you just just can't keep up with. It's uh, I think it's op opening a lot of doors, but it's certainly closed a load as well. Yeah, I think, yes. I think well, it's quite sad. Same, the same as with this. Yeah, well, the same as this. Um, internet is opening the door for a lot more people um, with radio. People from home, like me, presenting a show from, from my office, going across the world. Do you think yeah. that's a good idea for radio? Is it opening a lot of doors for new new talent, do you feel? I think so. I certainly agree. I certainly think that the um, it's, it's got a whole new audience, and it, I, th I certainly think it's the way it's going to go. Um, a lot of the trouble with all, a lot of these FM stations now, they're getting too robotic. Um, people and with obviously one of the biggest like, biggest radio groups in the in the country recently, um, there's been a lot of upset, a lot of on online uh, interaction, a lot of people really upset by the move and the decisions and it has caused a lot of people to turn to turn off and change stations me me, me specific i, I personally yeah. had a lot of, they, they, a lot of all, all, yeah but they seem to be all being like you were saying all brought up by the big names and they're all coming generic there's no individuality so it, it, i suppose it just, the internet hmm is open open that door up for individuality oh yeah definitely and community radio is the way it's going to go forward it's opened a lot of doors for community radio and smaller stations and smaller stations that were struggling before have now got a foot in the door 
or going to excel going forward. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Looking at it as well, you know, just talking about radio, TV, like me, you could probably remember three or four TV channels and we had to watch TV live. And it's amazing. We've got like digital TV, we've got loads of channels and we can watch stuff online on demand. It's certainly a changing world. And Definitely. It, it's, it's, happened so, it's, it's happened so quick. It has happened very quick. But Sorry, I, say I, again. I was going to say, it has happened very quick, but is it, a, is it a world that is going to become too scary? Is technology going to take over? Because, or, because there's places now where it already is. Supermarkets are a prime example. I, I, I don't like going into supermarkets with these self-service tools. Yeah, I tell you what. I tell you what I find, especially in Tesco's, I, I like you know the little guns that they've got. I like going around with a gun and pretending I'm shooting everybody. But you know that's me, and I'm completely nuts, and I do things like that. But when it comes to going to the till, I always get stopped for a check, and they go through all your stuff, and you feel like even though you're not, you feel like some kind of criminal because they're searching for your stuff, and. How do, you, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I agree with you there. It's you like when I go into the way forward, to... or would you rather just stick it for a normal tail? I just, I, I'm one. I'm, I'm, I guess, a bit old school in a way. I, I, I just want to, want to deal with a person. It's the same in a, in a bank now, where they just pounce on you at the door and say, "What can, what can I help you with today?" I said, "I'd like to speak to a person," and. It's just, yeah. I don't agree with it. I think it's take. It's certainly putting people out of jobs, but. I don't know. I think it's a very grey area, to be honest. Very grey area. Yeah. No, I, I totally, I totally get what you mean because a lot of things now. I do get frustrated with a lot of things. Um, like it's like contact us online. Uh, go to our website and make it. Uh, we've got information on there, and it tells you to click on something else, then click on something else, and it still hasn't resolved the problem. Yeah. It's. It's sometimes. I know what you mean. Sometimes it's easier just to talk to a person and they can resolve it straight away most of the time i've had issues I, i've had issues in the last few days with something i sold on a well-known auction site and they still haven't sent through the funds i'm trying to sort it out at the moment but i've dealt with a person three times for two different areas and no one's resolved it yet yeah that's a problem because it's it comes so big like you're saying like these auction sites and stuff come so big. There's so many people involved. There's not the resources, the people in the background to keep up, up with it, I don't think. And yeah. some things do slip like that. And it just, like you said, it's just that circle where things don't get resolved. I don't exactly. think a lot of people, when they started to organise those, expected it to come big as it is. Because you imagine, like YouTube and places, you imagine the amount of people uploading the videos. It takes a lot of people to double check everything and all that. Oh so yeah, it, yeah. So it's it's technology that's moving very fast, maybe too fast in some respects. I think um, that's exactly that. I think it is. Too, I, I think it is too fast. We just can't keep up with it. Definitely. So. Exactly, and so you prefer you prefer the old. You prefer the older days when things were much more simpler, and yeah, I find right. back in back in back in back in the day things weren't so fast paced. Now everything seems to be a mad rush these days, doesn't it? Do you feel that? Yeah, yeah, completely. And even I'm like I like, I like yeah. to go in. I like to go the rare chance I get to go on the high street. I like to go to put to a to a shop, and in in Berry where we are now, we're we're losing HMV. And that's the last music shop to go in the town. Once that's gone, there's nowhere to get music. And I like to go and, although I, dig, I DJ digitally now, I still like the feel of a CD, still like to get an album to listen to in the car. And I used to love going into places like Woolworths and stuff like that. And some of the shops, looking at an online article this after, uh, a few days ago, the amount of shops that have gone, the, the high street is changing yeah. and not the better. It, 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 it is. It is. Well, look, it, it seems that I streets have come in uh, mainly one of three things a charity shop, a barber shop, or a nail bar. 
that's yeah. how the horse well, races. Um, because companies, everything's online. Companies can't keep up. Companies can't keep up with it. And like you were saying about records at HMV, I used to love Andy's records in Cambridge. And like Bruce was saying earlier in a comment uh, about Jay's records, I used to love originally getting vinyl records, looking at the sleeve and all that. And he had the artwork where you're riding home on the bus thinking, hey, I can't wait to listen to this. Or the same with a CD. There's none of that now. You just click on it and listen to it. There's no nothing behind it. No, no artwork. Exactly. It's no, just I, a song. Exactly. Uh, no, I, Bruce I, is also, I love the smell, of, the smell of vinyl. Yeah, I don't know if you can see Bruce's comment on screen, but he's saying, "Look how many record shops in Cambridge have been lost since the nineties," and yeah. he's, he's spot on there. Yeah, it is, and it's it's a it's a really. Did you really ever sad. visit places like Andy's Records? I did. I did visit Andy's Andy's Records. I loved it. Really did yeah. love it, and that's why I, I wish. Like now, we've only got HMV, but that's as I said, it's closing down. There's no. Well, we've got a vinyl cafe in Barry, but that's it. There's nowhere else to go to. It it, it it's a shame, and everywhere's going to end up like this. Sadly, it's like. Cambridge, so many empty shots, you walk around and just empty spaces and yeah. they're so expensive there as well. Um, it's it's like another record shop, I don't know if you remember it, Al Price. They, yes, I do remember Al Price. They were, they were, they were, big, in the, they were big in the day and they, they, they just vanished off the face of the earth. Yeah. It's, it's sad. It's a sad changing world. Yeah, it is. If, the, some, if there was something that you could bring back, though, uh, from the past, you'd, somebody said to you, a shop or change something to how it was. So, like, for instance, you could get rid of um, Wi-Fi or Internet or something, just, just using that as for instance. I can imagine none of us can live without the Internet anymore. <laughs> but just saying, for instance, if there's something you could get rid of and be back like it was Back when you were younger, or bring back, what would you, what would you do? What would you pick? That's an easy answer. Woolworths without fail. Woolworths. I used to love going in there yeah. Christmas time and weekends, and particularly go look at the pick and mix. And it was just, like I said, the the getting CD. I used to look forward to the when the top forty was out, and going and getting the, the latest number one single, and ju and just. Used to get a buzz, used to get a buzz, and now it's like I haven't listened to the charts in God knows how long. And I did a, an event and did a disco last night. Same, event same. Night. The kids were coming coming to me with music requests, and I hadn't even heard of half of it. Yeah, no, it's just, it's just, it's the same with me. It's like I don't know if you used to record them on the old cassette tape. Now the top forty, yeah, they play the top forty, and they go down it. And every song you'd want to tape, every song you'd want to tape, and then. You get like the the presenter's voice over it, and you think, "God!" Uh, and oh, he's, why did he have to talk so soon? Why couldn't he just left it a little bit longer? Yeah, exactly. But that was all part of ch childhood, and that's all that's all gone. Um, yeah, all gone. Bruce, he, Bruce, he, Bruce, he, Bruce has sent us a message. I don't know if you can see it. Saying the manager of Jay's, I spoke to the other night. When they closed in 2003, they were making only five percent markup on the charts CDs. Mm. So even back then, unfortunately, I, I, it's a dying industry. I don't really personally. Is yeah, no. So I was saying personally, uh, it's a generation thing. I don't understand modern music. I really, I don't. I, I'm more of back to 60s, 70s and 80s and music. Yeah, and I know I, I, you're a big fan of the 80s as well yourself. You've done many a radio show about the 80s. Still do. Still do. You still But it's, it is, it's, as a DJ myself, it is, and it's so hard to keep on top of it. And even with, like I said a bit earlier, the, the modern, modern music, I just, it's impossible to keep on top of. There's so, so much changing yeah. and, the, the, the party I did last night, a kid's coming to me saying, can I have this, can I have that? And I'm having to ask my stepdaughters, who are seven and eight, 
so uh, seven and nine, what 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 do they listen to? So I can keep on top of it. It's really really hard yeah. now. No, I know you. there's a lot as well. What makes it what makes it harder as well is a lot of strong language in yeah. songs, and you've got to be so careful as well. Everything has to be monitored, and you've got to make sure that you're not playing song with strong language in the wrong place at the wrong oh, time yeah, definitely. as well. It's certainly. Definitely, I got caught out with that one track I played last night. I looked for a clean version, and it just and it was it wasn't. Yeah, some some of them there isn't actually clean versions to them. I don't think um, some no. songs they're made like that, and that's that's it. Yeah, exactly. Saying that though, talking about your radio show because we're running out of time coming to the end of yeah, the show. Sure. Your radio show, I'll let you give I'll give you let you give it a bit of a plug. Where people where can people hear you when what time and what's it all about? Okay, so it's called Ultimate 80s, and you can find listen to us on Felix Doe Radio, 107.5 FM and online at the website. Um, it's all, 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 all every other Thursday, and myself and another gentleman called Keith uh, present it between us, and it alternates with another show that does it the opposite Thursday to, to us. And it's everything about the 80s, history, music, culture real real feel good 80s classics brilliant stuff so check that out so if you want to escape from the present day it's getting too much for you take a trip back with you paul a on your show and bring back the 80s we can't can't go back to the 80s but you can bring the 80s to us it's on between 9 9 p.m and 11 p.m on a thursday evening Brilliant. So 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. on a Thursday, Felix Stoke Radio. If you want to escape from the present day and get back to the 80s, ever listen to you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, definitely. Brilliant stuff. It's, it's great chatting to you and catching yeah, up good with to, you. Yeah, good to see you again. Good to see you and again. Thanks for coming on the show. No problem. And I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Talk soon. And you. Yeah, bye. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. That was great. Great catching up with Paul and, of course, him sharing his memories as well. And, yeah, give him a listen, people. Uh, Felix Stowe Radio, um, I think he said every other Thursday between uh, I can't remember, between 9 and 11. Uh, take a trip back to the A's. Great guy. I've known, I've known him for a very long time and like we've worked on and off of radio. And he's, he's still involved with the radio side. And that's what he's good at, and he enjoys it, and can definitely guarantee some great tunes uh, from him from the eighties. So do, give, give him a check out. Well, that's the end of the show. Yeah, it's been great being back here with you, and of course we'll be back next week. I'm going to put something up on Facebook, uh, on the Facebook page, which is at facebook.com forward slash the Cambridge Historian, with what you can vote for. Um, what you would like to see in the next show. So you get two choices. You vote, you pick, and then I will chat about it. And while we're away, uh, check out the website at cambridgehistorian.co.uk. That's cambridgehistorian.co.uk. And if you want more information or anything, just drop me a message, uh, memories about Cambridge, whatever, photos or something you want to share on the show, do so. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. And you can by going to info at cambridgehistorian.com. That's info at cambridgehistorian.com. And we've got, the, we've got the brilliant theme tune coming up very soon to the show, of course, put together a uh, song by Jason Bruce. Uh, if you like it and you want to keep singing along through the week to it, uh, you can by getting hold of your own copy at jasonbruce.com, uh, going to his store on there and looking for Cambridge Story Live. It's only 99p. It's only 99p, people. But until next time, I'd like to thank you all. Thank you for watching. Thank you for Paul for being my guest. And thank you for getting involved. And of course, especially Bruce, uh, a regular viewer of us. So until next time, 
Take care. Cambridge Historian Live with Bob Chamberlain. Cambridge Historian Live with Bob Chamberlain. Bill Road, Lion Yard, and Patty Kittery. Sid Barrett, Ryan Spider. You can ride her if you like. You can ride her if you like. Cambridge Historian Live with Bob Chamberlain. Cambridge Historian Live with Fox Chamberlain. 